It's time for Around the Ozarks in 5, brought to you by the Springfield Green County Park Board, Roto-Rooter Plumbing and Drain Service, Blue Current, and Thompson Sales. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Foreheads. Well, it is not Ethan and Sarah. It is two beautiful ladies you have with you today. You have uh, myself filling in for uh, Ethan or Sarah. And then you have my friend Joey Powell with the Dickerson Park Zoo. Welcome, Joey. We're glad you're filling in for us today. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so let's get to some news. Here we go. Uh, We made it through Monday. Thank God. Okay, so the Springfield Business Journal, they recently held their Dynamic Dozen event this past week where they announced and celebrated the fastest growing company in the Ozarks. This was so neat. Congratulations to Keep Supply. That's K-E-E-P Supply. The supply company, um, they announced they were the top company in SBJ's Dynamic Dozen, and they make industrial parts, equipment for food, beverage, chemical, and pharmaceutical manufacturers. I hadn't heard of them, but um, they are doing very well. And according to a news release from the Business Journal, they reported $31.9 million dollars in revenue last year. Um, That's a 175% jump over the three-year growth period. So the company's um, 2021 through 2023 workforce count grew 219% up to 67 employees, um, which is astounding. And also congratulations are in order for other companies such as Phoenix Home Care and Hospice, Convoy of Hope, uh, Ethan's company, and um, actually Hal's company, but uh, Ethan works there. And OMB Bank, Environmental Works, Cox Health, Command Family Medicine, um, Tothan Associates, Eagle Outdoors, Epic Strategies, Next Level Solutions also ranked in those dynamic dozen lists. So quite remarkable. Congratulations. Congrats. All right. Now to this. So recipients of the Women, Infant, and Children's Program, uh, commonly known as WIC, uh, that works to improve the overall uh, health of families by supporting nutritional health of pregnant and postpartum and breastfeeding people, as well as infants and children up to the age of five. They now have access to additional benefits through Missouri WIC Farmers Market Nutrition Program. How cool is this? So according to this news release from the Springfield Green County Health Department, WIC members can receive $20 in benefits per person annually that can be used to purchase eligible foods at participating farmers markets and other vendor locations. These benefits are available for women and infants over four months old uh, and children one to five years old. So uh, they need to be fresh cut uh, herbs or fresh fruits and vegetables. And obviously additional information um, can be found online through the WIC program. Um, but it's running now through October 31st. So how neat is that, Joey? It's very cool. You know, food is so expensive and especially really, you know, I know, fresh food. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it doesn't $20 does not seem like near enough per person per year. But you know, hopefully this will be a successful program that then they just continue to Mm -hmm. keep it going, you know, keep it going, see the demand and right in time for all those delicious farmers markets opening up. Wait, summer food, summer foods. Hey, people, okay, this is exciting. Okay, we're summer, we're maybe not thinking of this, but we now know the 2024 NFL season opening game. What? NFL announced Monday morning the season opener will be a rematch of the 2023 season AFC championship game. The Kansas City Chiefs will open the season at Arrowhead Stadium on Thursday, September 5th at 8.20 p.m. Eastern time against the Baltimore Ravens, and it's airing on NBC. The NFL will release the entire 2024 schedule on Wednesday on NFL Network. So stay tuned. Pretty exciting season. Yeah. Are you you a big Chiefs fan? I'm a big Chiefs fan, but like I'm, I'm really not, I'm not the perfect Chiefs fan because I'm like usually doing something else while watching the Chiefs. (laughs) So I like to like wear the apparel and do a really good job of, of, I say posing as a really good Chiefs fan, but I'm really not a good Chiefs fan. <laughs> I don't even got on red. I didn't even plan that. How about I that? know. Are you? Are you a big Chiefs fan, Joey? Okay. Full disclosure, I'm not even a real big sports fan. <laughs> um, you know, I pick them on their costumes, and I still call it intermission. And so there we go. <laughs> well, but that's okay. Wanna, we, 
I am a Missouri fan and I am pro anything that supports Missouri. So go Chiefs. Yeah. Yes, yes I, love that. I, love, I love it. So uh, going on about the Chiefs, congratulations are in order for Mitch Holtis. Uh, Mitch Holtis is the Kansas City Chiefs play-by-play broadcaster, and he has been named the 2024 Kansan of the Year by the Kansas Society of Washington, D.C. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Uh, Mitch has been the voice of the Kansas City Chiefs since 1994. He's known for his numerous iconic calls to his familiar presence on radio, television, and digital programs throughout the Ozarks Chiefs or throughout the Chiefs Kingdom. He will be honored at the Kansas Society of Washington, D.C.'s annual banquet on July 9th. Kind of cool. That's I also cool. You know, he actually is the one that originated the catchphrase Chiefs Kingdom. No, I had no idea. I didn't know that either. I thought How? that was kind of cool. Wow, that's really cool. That's a big deal. And that speaking caught of, on. Yes. Yeah, speaking I of mean, Chiefs Apparel, it's on everything. Yeah. People can just like have kingdom on a hat and you're like, Chief's kingdom it's or kingdom. the kingdom of God. But yeah. most of the time people are thinking about Chief's kingdom. kingdom. I think it's in the font you use. <laughs> right. True. True. So That's it's kind of cool. And, the, cool. and I like it. Isn't he the, the, the guy? It's, it's the iconic call. Touchdown. Kansas City. City. Yeah, I mean, for I sure. Like makes that like three syllables very strong. <laughs> he Kinda does. Fun. I met him once um, with, yes, with with my husband who works for um, the radio station that does around the Ozarks. I kind of have an in here, I feel like, Mm -hmm. but they, um, they have an event where they will have, because they broadcast the Chiefs games on 104.7 The Cave. And so um, such a nice guy. He had um, a chance to come to Springfield with a couple um, of the other like posse I don't, I can't even appreciate like the names, you I guys. Do. I'm so yeah. sorry. And but, I think he's really close with Art Haynes and we yes. love, yes, we love Art. Yes. I mean, That's such cool. a neat, such a neat guy. And, you know, it's good to see there's yeah. famous people out there that are still salt of the earth, you know? Yes. And I think he makes listening to the games a lot of fun. I agree. That voice is a great, he's got a great radio voice. I agree. He, I agree. I like it. All right. Well, on to this. The Galois uh, Theater's second midweek matin- matinee of the month is this Wednesday. It's coming up tomorrow. Galois will be showing breakfast at Tiffany's. Oh. Um, so arrive early p- to partake in the Ozarks Elder Law Trivia starting at 145. And um, also Green and Christian County seniors 60 plus get a free combo ticket with proof of ID upon arrival. And um, it's always, I think, a great fun time there to watch a movie in a great historical place like the Galois. Have you seen bref- Breakfast at Tiffany's? I have. It has been a long time, but I have seen it. It's, you know, what a, it's a good rainy day movie. Yeah. Have it's been it? years. years. It's been so many years since I've seen it. I mean, I just remember Audrey Hepburn, right? She, oh, right. she's like that iconic black and white picture of her is just yes. so great. <laughs> it's like a croissant she pulls out of the bag and the very <laughs> opening. I'm always amazed that it's written by Truman Capote because it's so different than some of yeah. the other. Man could write a lot of things. Wow. Well, now on to this. The Northern Lights were like such a big deal this past weekend. And um, they were visible in some areas around the Ozarks this past weekend, according to space.com. The Northern Lights, or the Aurora Borealis, if I'm saying that right, are beautiful dancing ribbons of light that have captivated people for the millennia. I mean, a long time. They were visible in some areas um, due to a geometric storm. So did you see the Northern Lights, Joey? I did not. I really wish I could have. It's kind of a bucket list for me. I would love to see them. Did did you? Yeah. No, I am apparent, but apparently we're the only two people that didn't (laughs) see them (laughs) because I was out. I I, I was in Chicago. So, oh, okay. So you had an excuse. No, I was here. I was here. I should have seen them. And everybody else on social media here saw them. And I was talking to a friend of mine and she said, no, you really couldn't see them with your naked eye. You had to take pictures with your phone. And I'm like, okay, so, so that was the secret. I should have just taken a picture with my phone. I would love to travel somewhere to see them. Like, oh, I would Alaska, too. Iceland. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, 
Oh, I can't even imagine. So, okay, our last story for the day. This is quite interesting. Uh, Springfield Mercy Hospital's labor and delivery team. Get this. They recently reported that stormy weather is correlated with increased births. We knew that. (laughs) In a story uh, by KY3, Dr. Chandria Johnson, an OBGYN with Mercy Springfield, says there is evidence support supporting that drops uh, in bari- barometric pressure with bigger storms do bring on births. I wonder if full moons do as well. <laughs> yeah. I was, we've always heard this. As yes. Well as, you know, we've always heard this. So according to the National Institute of Health, many studies have shown that changes in the weather affect health during labor pain. A casual relationship was noted between the number of uh, rupture of the fetal membranes, delivery, and the barometric pressure, suggesting that low barometric pressure induces um, all of that and gets things, I guess, moving a little quicker. Ooh. So expecting moms, especially those who are almost due, regularly check the weather forecast. <laughs> There, there uh, may be a chance of thunderstorms coming up later this week. And you can obviously tune in to uh, Ozarks around the Ozarks wake up weather with Abby Dyer, uh, just running shortly after this podcast. But um, isn't that the craziest thing, Joey? It is. But I mean, you remember, didn't you always hear that full moons and and I can remember being pregnant, you know, people coming up. Oh, you are you, you're, it's obviously you're you know, you're close to having a baby. And like, oh, after they've rubbed, good. after they've rubbed on your belly yes. and they're like, belly. Oh, it's going to be a full moon. <laughs> okay. You're like personal space. Really? <laughs> People yeah. would ask if we were having twins all the time. And I'm like, no, no, I just have big babies. Thank you. <laughs> but okay. But enough about, I guess now. Yeah. So from pregnancies to, um, any any cute babies at the zoo? Tell us what's going on at the zoo. Is there any fun events coming up or things you want uh, the Ozarks to know about? Well, hopefully we'll maybe have some cute babies coming up. We have some hopefuls. Uh, it is that time of year. But the biggest and I think something that we're so excited about is we have rebranded our education program, changed the name, everything. It is now Wildlife Zoo University. Oh, cute. Very fun. It's, uh, you know, it doesn't happen overnight if you think about a rebranding and a remodeling, but we are going to completely redo the education building with murals and different kinds of seating. Like you might sit in a, a nest or climb into a log that, or, oh, you know, sensory fine. tables, all kinds of different things. So, you know, it's going to take a little time to do the remodel, but the rebranding is going to include some new classes, uh, some new camps in June and some adult classes in August. So we really are, when I say Zooniversity, it's going from all ages up into the adults. So we're, we're really excited about this. Love the name, love our new logo. We're doing uh, uh, just a a complete overhaul of the entire program, uh, the lesson plans, everything. And so the parents that are really looking to supplement education and to really connect their kids to nature and the natural world and instill in them a love of the planet and animals. This is, this is it. It's such a great hands-on opportunity. I mean, you can't always touch every animal at the zoo. Like I want to get in the cheetah exhibit not going to happen, Diana, but, but I I like you. I don't want that to happen. I know. Yeah. Stay alive, Diana, but it is so neat to be able to see the animals and just have those really neat interactions and learn about them and learn. Um, You know, I'm always surprised at the uh, species and the efforts that zoos do to keep species alive. Um, And I, the conservation efforts are huge. So thanks for what you do with the Dickerson Park Zoo. Thank you for helping co-host around the Ozarks and um, we'll, we'll see you guys later. We hope that you have a wonderful Tuesday. Absolutely. Bye. Bye. It's time for Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather, sponsored by Scooters Coffee and Rescue Towing. Here's your host, meteorologist, Abby Dyer. Good morning, everybody, and happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining on Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather. I hope you're having a great start to your day. A few scattered showers are going to be out there today, but overall the trend will be to dry the atmosphere out a little bit as we head into this evening, overnight tonight, 
and certainly into the middle of the week on Wednesday. What we have this morning for you is a bit of ground fog developing in a few places that have been oversaturated. So don't be surprised by that on the early morning drive. If you're up early, just know we're going to be dealing with some areas of patchy fog early this morning where visibility could be reduced less than a half mile. Take your time. Remember, low beams are best in foggy conditions. Otherwise, the headlines include that we're going to see some drier weather here in the next couple of days. I'm anticipating temperatures that are going to start out near the 60 degree point. We have some upper 50s as of 5 a.m. this morning. Once again, we're only warming to the low 70s. It's a cooler pattern. We are now on the back side of a low pressure system, and that is going to allow a few showers to kind of rotate around the back side of the low. For us, that means widely scattered showers in the forecast. I can't rule out any rumbles of thunder, but no severe weather is expected today. We'll call it isolated in the forecast on Tuesday, but really I think we're going to see this wrapping up as the day wears on. We may hold on to a few stray afternoon showers, but they won't be much, and it's certainly not going to rain all day today. This low pressure system continues to push off to the east and we get some drier air building in kind of for one day only on Wednesday. Wednesday looks like the nicest day of the work week and temperatures will respond to the mostly sunny skies that are in the forecast for us. Tomorrow I have high temps that warm to about 78 degrees. Feeling pretty warm tomorrow in comparison to the cool low 70s that we have for you this afternoon. But it's kind of a one day warm up because more rain is in the forecast as we head into Wednesday night through the Friday time period. Now, at least at this point, I don't see a whole lot of chances for severe weather, but I think flooding is something that's going to need to be monitored with this system as we head into Thursday, Thursday night, into Friday morning. We've had a whole lot of rain around the month of May, and really the second half of April was pretty soggy too. You know we've had some issues with flooding over the last few weeks, and I think we could see more of that in the forecast as we head into the second half of the work week. So this is just kind of an early heads up for you. If you got baseball games, end of school year activities going on the second half of the week, I'm thinking Thursday looks pretty soggy and we should have some showers out at least through the first half of Friday. Wednesday, if you need a guaranteed dry day, that's it for you. Head outdoors tomorrow. High temperatures in the upper 70s. Today, plenty of dry time. I think rain will be coming to an end, but we're looking at a high temperature of about 72 here in the forecast today. Numbers are still fairly warm, close to seasonal averages by Thursday and Friday. I have high temperatures that will land in the mid to upper 70s, even with the rain chances that are in the forecast both of those days. Around the country, what's making headlines? It's severe weather and flash flooding impacting portions of the southeast today. Yesterday, we had portions of the Gulf Coast seeing severe weather. Today, it's pushing a little bit further to the east. We also have above average temperatures expected for pretty much the entire western half of the country. They are experiencing some above normal temperatures, a bit of a heat wave out west, so getting an early taste of summertime for many of western communities. All right, it's time for the Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather Brain Twister Trivia Question of the Day. This is the question that I left you with yesterday. It has to do with Mother's Day. What is the official Mother's Day flower? The options that I gave you were A, carnation, B, rose, C, tulip, or D, daisy. And the answer, this was surprising to me. It's actually A, the carnation. I did not know. You know, you walk into all the stores and they have the bouquets up ready to sell, reminding everyone that it's Mother's Day, the big signs like, hey, FYI, <laughs> pick up one of these bouquets for mom. They're always roses. Um, at least that's my observation from walking into many different stores. Uh, it's actually A, the carnation is the Mother's Day flower. Uh, the white carnation by the way, specifically the white carnation, is said to symbolize motherhood and is used to both honor a mother who has passed away and to celebrate a mother who is still living. So next year, if you're thinking of mom, try white carnations um, and then tell her the meaning behind them. They are the official flower of Mother's Day. Now you know. Here's a question that I'll leave you with for tomorrow. Which British queen gave birth to the most children. Do you think it was A, Queen Elizabeth, B, Queen Elizabeth II, C, Queen Mary, or D, Queen Victoria? 
You can submit your guests at aroundtheozarks.com. Just head there, click on contest. You'll find the Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather Brain Twister trivia question. It is free to enter, and every single day we're giving away $20 to Scooter's Coffee. So you might as well enter. Take a guess. All correct answers enter to win that gift card. Thank you also to Rescue Towing for sponsoring Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather. And thank you so much for listening early this morning. Be careful with the fog out there early on. We've got a few isolated showers through the first half of the day on Tuesday. High temperature today about 72 degrees. And we will see a warmer day with the sunshine returning in the forecast as we head into Wednesday. Have a great afternoon. I'll chat with you again early tomorrow.